So sometimes the uh, urge to paint becomes so strong that you just have to grab your paper, grab your paints and your brushes and get started. Uh, this was one of those occasions. There's no drawing, it's just the urge to paint. So the watercolour paints that I'm going to be using in this demo are Windsor and Newton and it's just five five hues, five colours. So we're dropping in after spraying the paper ultramarine blue and I'm going to spread this around with a brush. This is a, a 12 a round brush so adding a bit of water touch more of the pigment just watering it down a little bit and then we're going to come in with some raw sienna uh, this is a great color for distance I'm going to notice the uh, horizontal brush strokes just to indicate the horizon I'm just going to add in some uh, neutral tint it's very similar to Payne's grey and just let that run and blend and bleed into the raw sienna so at this stage everything's quite fluid as you can see and as I've stated many times before and no doubt will state many times in the future watercolour is about the water so let's keep it nice and liquid so you can see that the sky, the grey blue of the sky is uh, running into the raw sienna which in itself is creating the illusion of a distant distant hills, a distant bank of course uh, I said this is coming straight out of my head I'm just making this up having to think what I want to do next the basic design here is going to be into um, four sections I think we've got the sky obviously we're going to have the middle distance and the foreground yeah, there'll be a, a tree to the left quite a you know, predominant tree I think pushing everything back but here's some neutral tint uh, still quite liquidy and this is going to form the kind of banks of the estuary I've just dropped in some sienna in there again. Uh, notice how far back uh, my hand is on the brush. It's really important to to keep that distance and not make your uh, fingers go too close to the tip of the brush. This is not pen work. This is about a loose style, and we're here. We're just forming shapes, keeping everything nice and liquid keep dropping in water adding a touch of the spray there for more moisture I'm aiming to get this painting done within a half an hour so I'm, I'm working fast I'm keeping everything liquid you can see that bead of, of liquid which is important is almost going to paint itself in a way because of the runs and then you get the luminosity the transparency uh, the watercolor is, is famous for We're just warming up there these sort of brownie greys with a touch of raw sienna yet again I'm just dropping in a few splatters and now I'm going to take out some color with a, with a clean tissue this will help create the illusion of some clouds in the distance but also soften some edges because most of these edges are quite hard they're, they're going to form a, a hard edge when they dry so we need to make sure that we've got opposites like soft and hard and back into the mixtures that we've already got just kind of fiddling around really until we get the right sort of 
mixture and this is going to going to go a bit darker in tone now and this is obviously the foreground so we need to darken up again this is still wet so the pigment and the liquid that I'm now putting in the water will kind of blend and bleed in and dry still quite light just defining a few lines at this stage the painting is quite abstract in a way and to create form we need to strengthen up the foreground but we don't want to overdo the detail so this is all very very loose and now we're going to have a go at the the estuary coming in starting darker at the bottom of the paper and working up lighter towards the horizon leaving a few gaps of white paper to suggest reflections and that's kind of the first wash done we're just softening off there that's just uh, clean water on the brush just going in the fingernails now a little bit of thinking time and, and I'm with a smaller brush now this is a, a number five round brush back into that neutral tint very dark mixture coming in here And we're going to look at the, the headland, the kind of right hand side, middle distance. There's going to be some blending and bleeding going on here because quite a lot of this paper is still wet. And this is risky. You never know what's going to happen as it all blends and bleeds. But the more you practice, the more you get an idea. It doesn't really matter what, what this is, it uh, shapes the kind of will create themselves and colours will create illusions within themselves. Just creating things, things out of your mind is it really, really interesting, interesting because the process of the visual flashes on the cross and the side of the painting, but now we're going to the sky, whoops, uh, we'll sort that out into a while. While it's still happening, there's no other worries. So I'm sort of getting, getting the blending and the bleeding of these uh, pigments together. The ocean marine, the neutral tint, the burnt umber, and the raw sienna. But this, this tiny brush can, can allow us for little flicks of, of energy, really. So it's important to. Bear in mind what you're trying to create right here, and this is almost like bushes or trees coming up. So we are trying to take some of those out there. And then you just got to let the paint do the work and the water do the work, just let things blend and bleed. At the moment we have a lot of light in this painting which is great so you see where I dabbed out earlier in the middle so there we go just dabbing out a bit of color and that will still carry on blending and bleeding away just watching that for a second or two just to see how it works out and now a bit of thinking time just uh, the back of the finger just making sure that's dry up some more colour. Having a think. And here we go. Big and bold. Burnt umber. 
search of neutral tint, creating the sort of edge trunk of the trees. Oh, that's strong. I have to sort that out in a little while. I have to take that back a bit. See how that works as it dries. And obviously, it's having the right brush to create the right job. And I have to go with a smaller brush, thinner brush for the fine twiggery. These lines are quite important that come off of the tree, you know, the branches. But I, I look at them as lines because they kind of they point the eye towards that distant horizon, which really is where the focal point of this will be eventually. Of course, this is really an exercise in um, just really experimentation because it's coming out of my head not something in front of me it's a good exercise it means that I'm just working spontaneously without thinking too much which is great it's not so much of how am I going to simplify what's in front of me but what's being simplified as it appears from my head and now I've gone right the way down now this brush I picked out lots of the bristles to make this really really fine there's a number three brush and it's probably down now to a number one and it can create some really interesting effects so unfortunately I'm dropping paint all over my painting again but we'll deal with that in a little while and here we go in with the fingers the edge of the fingernails scratching out some color just creating some highlights not too much Obviously, you can see how thick the paint is with the water. It's sort of backfilling in on some of those highlights. Keeping it nice and wet again. So just letting the paint and pigment and the, the water do its own thing. Just testing that that's dry in the middle distance there before committing any paint because otherwise it will blur that's not the effect that I want whoops that's very watery this is a grey blue mixture there we go not too worried about that run because I can deal with that in a second there we go just take that out if you work quite quickly with these, that's it, breaking the lines up so we've not got all hard lines, we've got some soft edges as well. So that's the kind of blue-grey distance. I'm not sure what it is. Distant hills, could be a distant city. Fingers are good for blending and blurring and smudging things. with a smaller brush it's just to define it's still very wet look it's just blending and bleeding up this board uh, that I'm working on is there's not much of a slope on it um, and I did stop the video for a little while it's probably about a five minute break it took for a quick quick drink and have a little think about everything and, and I've come back in and decided to blur out some of these harder edges it was just not quite working as I was saying the board is a, is a very small angle it's probably 10 15 degrees up but it's enough for to make things run I would think those things running over water and the pigment So out in nature when you're painting a headland scene like this, or any scene, you always seem to be chasing the light. The light is changing rapidly, especially 
uh, when you've got full sun, shadows change. Whoa, that's a bit strong. I have to sort that out. I'm trying to create some sort of focal point now. But I really was strong. This paint is incredibly. There we go. Let's just blur some of this off. This is the uh, neutral tint. And this should create the illusion of a distant hill. As so long as we can get gaps of light in. So we'll just go in with fingers now. Look, just feeling so inspired at the moment just to to run in. It's not new at all. Tano, way, way back, used his fingers a lot. Many painters do. It's quite a satisfying sort of primal urge, I guess. Way, way back to our ancestors in the caves. But this is creating some nice effects. And as long as we've got, as I say, tiny spaces of light in between, which we have that first wash, then it's going to work. And we just got to throw some in. Look, let's just see what happens. Let's, let's go crazy. Whoa, that was too crazy. Let's take that out. You never know what's going to happen unless you experiment. You've got to be brave. But after all, it's just paper. And it's just paint. So don't worry too much about it. It's almost like being a kid again. Just throwing it down just for the fun of it. So all these marks will come together as we, we try to, to, to bring this in. So I've now gone on to a a one inch brush, this is a synthetic brush, which creates some nice sort of blocks of shape really. I'm back in with my fingers. As I said, I've, I've got a timer on here. I'm trying to get this done in 30 minutes and then stopping it you know, around that 30 minute mark, but no more than that is the key. So you go, right, 30 minutes, this is it, what can I do? And then stop, because otherwise you can fiddle. At the moment I am fiddling a little bit, but there must be a vision inside my head there somewhere. And it's really creating recession I'm trying to do here. And just the suggestion, the mere suggestion of, well, who knows? Distant city, distant hills, distant structures on the coast. Just strengthen up some of the textural paintwork here on the left hand side with the tree. The original tree that I started with was way too strong so I've sort of backed off on that one. But I'm now going to put in a few more a few more branches. So you've got soft edges underneath and hard edges on the top here. Some broken lines there. So sometimes the paint, if it's not dry, will bleed. And if it is dry, it will, it will create a nice sharp edge. So the, the two working together is quite effective. And different tones, you know, darker and lighter. And they're going quite dark. And then the, the technique really is to push on to the brush and then slowly lift your hand up to create. There we go. I'm sort of jigging the brush about, wiggling it from side to side to create this uh, twiggery. As I mentioned earlier, this paper is Saunders Waterford, 140 pound in uh, weight. So I took another little break there and had a little fiddle, had a quick drink, and I've come back now. I'm going to strengthen up some of this tree. As I said, this is just a little bit of an experiment, this uh, painting, just, just messing with paint and just seeing what it can do. I'm trying to restrict the palette of colours, there's just five, five colours 
this painting. And here we come in with some raw sienna. Diagonal strokes you can see. Going in quick. Bringing in some other colours here, warmer and cooler. Maybe a slight grey and then a touch of burnt umber. Just gonna, there we go. Creating the illusion of of a bank here, but this is really more kind of like mud estuary. And then the main part of the tributary going in in the middle in a triangular shape. So we're getting closer and closer to the um, end of this painting. It's seems to have absolutely flown by. And we've probably got three or four minutes left to finish this off now. And this is this is sort of dry brushwork in here, just dabbing in a few a few darks, just indicating perhaps I don't know, a city buildings going off in the distance, creating some form, but not, not in any great detail. And of course atmosphere really important. You know, the light that is in the distant sky and along the river itself is really, really important. If you remember right at the start of the painting, I, I, if we look at it in terms of triangles, in the foreground triangle section that I've just worked on, um, that looked as if it was going to be part of the tributary, the river coming in, but actually it's turned out to be almost like a mud flat, a bank. in a few a few birds in the distance so we're getting near the end now we're going with the, the smaller brush it's always quite important to have life I feel in a painting unless you want to create real isolation so these these uh, indicated birds just dotted around you do see these out on the estuaries out and so they are you know in keeping with the painting. So we're getting there. Close to finishing now. So you can see how liquid a lot of the painting was. Um, on this size, 11 by 15 inches, you don't need to use huge brushes to get away with uh, in darker here, shall we? Let's, let's try and create a, a bigger focal point there in the distance. That's good. You don't ah, lovely. Just just drag that through. Let's drag it. Let's get some. Let's get some tonal contrast going. Take the eye right over there to the lightest light and the darkest dark. It's really got to compete with the tree on the left. Otherwise, that tree is gonna gonna dominate too much. So we need that to be darker for the tones in the tree. We also need to kind of join things up, join the shapes up. Yes, I'm enjoying this now. It's, it's, um, it's kind of coming together and getting there. And the time is ticking away as well. It's been over 24 minutes now. Let's just take out some of the paint with fingers to create some light and shade and different textures. That's good. Soften that off. Good. I really enjoyed this painting. It's just been such great fun just to to get stuck into everything really. And I hope that you've enjoyed enjoyed it too. Uh watching uh me creating this headland, uh the estuary, uh, working on some winter tree on the left hand side, some trees. And just indicating distant hills, maybe some buildings, some skyscrapers. It doesn't really matter what it is, it's just the feeling and I think th this has got atmosphere and it really does feel um, 
wild, um, spontaneous, full of light, full of atmosphere and full of colour. So don't forget to join me again for my next watercolour demonstration. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.